And here we are, this is Alexandria, by the sea. I live here, it's, um, it's a nice place. Uh, it's very noisy in summer, and was described as the jewel of the Mediterranean. Things have changed a bit since that time, and uh, the jewel's a little tarnished, but it's still um, a place of culture and art. And it's, it's a nice place. I Either way, I haven't got a lot of wasted to me. I arrived in Egypt uh, to live in 95, 24th of November. It was somewhere around 6, 7 o'clock in the evening <laughs> with a cat in one basket and 13 crates of, of things. The, the, um, the customs went through everything. <laughs> the chap ended up saying, Michelangelo, I'm, and okay, <laughs> what do you have? It's like, I have a lot of paint and brushes and pencils and it's like, not the kind of thing they were imagining to bring. Um, I also bought a scarab, a little Victorian replica. And the man at the customer says he had to take it and send it to be um, examined in case it was an original. And I pointed out to him at the time that people smuggled antiques out of Egypt, not into Egypt.
actually realise I've got a spoon in here. I was thinking of something else. Do you think I should do the advert for Beatty Milk as well? Beatty Milk? Really, it's not actually that good. Here, I'm kind of there. I can see where it's going to be. Uh, I suppose to talk about myself. Okay, well, I'm primarily um, an artist that works in acrylic. I like acrylic because it's an immediate material. I can put something down, I can work over it. I, uh, I started off working in acrylic in 88, 89. I used to work in oils all the time. And then I began to underpaint in acrylic because of the speed of application. I could put in an underpainting and then work over it with colour, oil paint. Then I found that I began to finish off in acrylic. So I basically moved into acrylic and left oil paints behind. People don't believe that they tend to use that size brush on most of my paintings. Um, most of my paintings are quite, quite large. I find these brushes really good. Yeah. I just take an ordinary long one and I chop about that much off the handle. Same thing for it off, and it's perfect. I'm mashing the potatoes alone all by myself with my own hands because I'm an expert potato person. This painting is called And the Stable Was Shaken and the Unstable Became Still. It's a line from um, a text. It, it for me, it, it represents when you go into a transitional period. Okay, at the moment we entered what they called the Aeon of Horus. So we are in a transitional period. We as individuals enter different periods when that which was stable becomes unstable. This is the moment where Horus is coming from 
the unmanifest to manifest. And the manifest is disintegrating and will become the unmanifest. It reminds me somewhat of the idea of revolution, which is, is governments are stable, they're established. There are wars, there are revolutions, they fall. Those that were the revolutionaries become the governments. And those that were the government eventually become the revolutionaries. And it's the same idea. It's the concept of yin and yang, the, the change. Yin and yang, their swirling uh, mass of chaotic elements, but from that is established um, stability. We need chaos to create the new. If you have just stability, you just repeat the same over and over and over and over again. We need the element of chaos to create different patterns that create evolution. This painting is about that. I got the cat hiding behind the mouse, the mouse uh, tank. Come here. The reason I paint is is I want to explore something that is unusual the spirit of man, the, the way we exist, the human, the animal, nature, God, goddess. Um, I want to understand This is basically where I live. My little, my little haunt. You're filming the back of my head again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's no good you filming the back of my head all the time. <laughs> That's better I think.
They're in the baby's room. This is where uh, the babies stay when, when they come up. And uh, this painting is called The Stake That Is the Crown of Ra. Um, I'm rather pleased with this one because my daughter likes to see that because it, it doesn't scare her. This is a really nice place to work. I like to work this size or a little bigger if possible. Um, I'm particularly fond of this, this painting because, well, the babies give me a lot of help with it. Uh, they help stick on the, the paper surface behind the canvas. Uh, they like to help as much as possible, and I like them to help as much as possible. It's really nice when they're all working together. They like to put in the nails and do the priming and stick on the paper. They're really good. It's really nice to have them involved. This painting is called The Babe in the Egg. Uh, for the very simple reason, there's a babe in the egg. And it's a winged egg. Uh, the babe represents a child's horse, the new dawn. You can think of it as a sun, uh, a dawn sun. And the blue lady, of course, is the infinite goddess, Lut. Forms of existence. But in one way, they're all the same. Also, the baby in the egg can be thought of in this painting in another way as this is Newt, and the center point is Hadid, the, the point of matter in space. Uh, this painting, uh, I finished it last night, 4.30, and um, it's called False Door. In ancient Egypt, we had the false door in the tomb that the spirit entered uh, the earth from the spirit, took its offerings, maybe met a few friends, and then returned to the spirit world. Uh, this painting is almost an echo of that in the way that it is a false door. The door on this painting cannot open because the bars actually continue straight through. It's, it's only a facade. Um, again, it's a comment on womanhood, uh, how society sees the female. Uh, another comment is about the skull or the crow as in this case. Uh, the crow is a blackbird. It's, it's, it's known to follow the battlefield, feed off the dead, as well as uh, eat carrion from the streets, roadkill. But if you look at the, the woman that's wearing all black from head to foot, in a way that's related to the image of the, the crow in this case. And of course, she's wearing a putty hat and she's got her hand on her hip. So in this, I'm trying to cover a lot of different ideas in one. The cage, of course, is, is self-explanatory. I lived in Luxor for nearly seven years, six years, from 1995 to 21, so it was six years. Uh, I loved Luxor, the proximity to the temples. I lived on the West Bank. I, I built a house there. It was an experience never to be repeated, but it was an interesting experience. Um, my house was about half a kilometre from the Valley of the Kings. I used to ride there on my motorcycle. I moved from Luxor in 2001 to Cairo. Cairo was <laughs> very busy after Luxor. Luxor was quiet, not a lot of traffic. 
Cairo, on the other hand, is Bethlehem. <laughs> it's so busy, you can't cross the roads. It's so when I first arrived in Cairo, it was a bit, um, a bit hairy. Uh, I lived in Cairo until 2007. I got married, had two children, and uh, they're twins. Wonderful. My wife's a poet, and. I moved to, we moved to Alexandria in 2007. Yeah, 2007, it's now 2013. So it's, it's, it's just over six years. Well, just coming up to six years because I, I moved here on the 24th of February. Um, Alex is, is busy. I tend not to really go out a lot. I, she may have many things to do, but um, it's a nice place to be. I like I like Alex. Uh, uh, the house in Siwa, uh, the family are all dying to go there. It's being built bit by bit, and hopefully one day we'll all uh, we'll all spend some time in Siwa. I, I tend to start off with fluid paint and I form the structure of the canvas. And once I've defined what the canvas will be, then I start working on it in colour. I don't mind changing things, I don't mind taking things out, I don't mind altering things. I tend to have like three, three types of brushes, uh, a flat, number eight. Um, this is a Pedalette, which I cut the handle off because it's a bit long. That's number three, and this is a number four pointing brush. And basically, I can cover the whole lot with those three brushes. Uh, I do tend to use a larger brush for putting in backgrounds. Uh, once once we've got the, the form established, then I, I, I work on laying in colour and then gradually refine that till I end up as, at a, a point when it's finished. I got halfway through it and then I had a break. I think the, the, the kids came up and we had time with the family and then I forgot what I used to mix orange with. <laughs> so I had to repaint the whole lot to get one, one shade in derivatives rather than what it was previously. That's the stable was shaken, and the other stable became still. What I like about that text is it encompasses so many possibilities. Infinity. 